Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and you want to tune in because we do all sorts of wonderful readings using the amazing Lenormand deck. Now, in this video, I want to tell you about what I have in mind for our monthly readings for 2020. A while back, I asked my community to tell me what they wanted to see for our monthly readings, and I gave three options in the survey. I proposed the portrait, the hourglass or something new. And I got an overwhelming response for something new. I got 44%. I got only 24% for the portrait, but I got a good 32% for the hourglass. So I think the hourglass is pretty popular. Now, I think the reason the hourglass is popular is because we were able to use the three astro clock cards and put them in the middle of the hourglass and then build on the hourglass using additional cards. And I think this method really helps keep the annual readings and the monthly readings in this cohesive continuity. So I decided I wanted to continue with this approach. And this is something that the portrait doesn't have. And I decided that it's best to continue with the approach where we can get the three astro clock cards and put them in the middle of the layout. And then for the monthly reading, we would build on top of that. So I designed what I call the diamond layout. Um, I'm sure someone have done it somewhere, but I've never seen it. So we have three versions of the diamond. We have the small, the medium, and the large. And the one that we are gonna use for our monthly readings is the medium one. Now I want to walk you through each of these three layouts. And I also have a guide for you, a free guide that you can download right away. I'd love for you to download the guide and give these layouts a try and ping me on social media and let me know what you've done with them. I would really love to know. The guide is free. It's linked in the description below. You can download it right away. Now I want to show you these three layouts and I want to walk you through the logic of why I'm not selecting the either the small or the large for our monthly readings and why I'm focusing on the medium one. And that's mainly because of the idea that we talked about that we can take these three astro clock cards and put them in the middle and then draw additional cards a bit like the hourglass, but it's a different configuration. So with this said, let's head over to Lenormand readers table and let me show you these three diamond versions. All right, so the first layout we're gonna start with is the small diamond. So I'm just gonna draw the cards for the sake of example. We have one, two, three, one at the top and one at the bottom. Now, I like to lay them out in this way. You might find another way to lay them out. You might want to start with the central card and then draw two cards on either side and then the top and bottom or any way you like. That really makes no difference. Now this layout is also looking like a cross. We have a central column and the horizontal line, and there's also the diamond around it here. So that's why I consider it as one of the diamond versions. And this is the small version. In the center, we would have the key theme, the key focus for the reading, and it could also represent the outcome. That is up to you. You might want to think about this and think a little bit beforehand how you want to interpret the cards. Now the next line is the horizontal line. So we've got these three cards here and they go from left to right. So it's very natural also to read them as a past, present, future, or possibly a progression of events at some point in the future, if it's not a past, present, future. And so if you're gonna read it as a past, present, future, then keep in mind that this is the present card. This would be the present card. And so it's possible then that the one on the right can be the outcome. But again, that's up to you. Or you might not read it as a progression at all or a past, present, future at all. You might just want to read it as a key storyline. That's also totally fine. Now, the vertical column has one on the top and one on the bottom. And that's also a key storyline of the reading. Sometimes the top card is read as the intentions or the ambitions or the aspirations. And then the bottom card has to do with what manifests or also what we are grounded on, our foundations. That's possible. And so in that sense, you can look at how the story unfolds from intentions to manifestation. That's also a possible way to read them. But again, you don't have to. You can just read them as storylines. And so this could just be a key storyline in addition to the horizontal one. And together, the cross are basically the key storylines with this central card connecting both. And then in addition to these lines, we have the diamond. So we have these four cards that surround the central card. Some people might treat them as a zigzag, or you might treat them in this direction or in another direction. Again, it's up to you. 
And I feel that these details don't really end up mattering for a reading. What does is that the cards sort of tell you how best to read them at times. Regardless though, the diamond tends to tell us the forces that are acting on the situation and also it tells us of the visible events that surround the situation. So that's for the small diamond. Now I'm not going to use this small diamond for our monthly readings because for one, I think it's too short for a monthly reading or for the monthly readings that I want to do. And also I want to be able to put the three Astro Clock cards in the middle of the diamond. Now, if I were to put these three Astro Clocks in the middle here, then again, we would just have two additional cards for our monthly readings. And again, that's too short. So this is a nice spread for doing a quick reading or maybe a really focused reading with just a few details. Even if it's an important question, it's totally fine. Now let's move on to the next level of the diamond and I'm going to skip over to the large one and you're going to see why in a bit. So the large diamond builds on the small diamond like so. So again, you might want to lay out the cards in any way that you like. You could start from this horizontal or from the vertical or at the center. And then I'd suggest that you add the surrounding cards or the corner cards here. So this is the large diamond. You can see there's many more cards and we have many more sentences and structures that we can put together. Now, obviously the first line that jumps out is the horizontal and then the second key line is the vertical. The central card remains central in the sense that it ties everything together. So again, you can see it as the outcome or possibly the key theme or the key focus that brings all of this reading together. And then the horizontal line would be a key storyline. So again, you can read this as a progression of events from the earlier phases to the later phases or possibly as a past, present and future. So these two cards here would be the past. These two cards here would be the future. And then we have the present card in the center here, which intersects the vertical. And when it comes to the vertical, these two cards can represent your intentions and ambitions. And then the two bottom cards can represent also the foundations or the actions that enable the outcome of the reading. Of course, these are optional ways of interpreting the cards, very similar to the small diamond here. And if you read them as storylines and they give you a lot of details, right? Because there's five cards here and five cards in the vertical and together they give you the key storylines. Now, what's interesting is that we have two diamonds in this large diamond. We have the inner diamond and we have the outer diamond. You can see the outer diamond is large, plenty of cards here. So when we have two diamonds, I take the inner diamond to represent the hidden influences on the situation. So what is not seen, what's going on behind the scene, what needs to come through the surface at some point. So the small diamond represents the hidden influences. And again, you can read them either sequentially in a diamond shape or maybe in a zigzag shape. It's up to you or maybe you let the cards guide you. And when it comes to the large diamond here, it represents the observable influences or the outer influences on the situation. It can also represent what is visible around the situation. So events that we are observing or will observe about this issue. And you can see there are plenty of cards here because this is so large. I would say it's a good idea to read them sequentially. It's not so much amenable to a diagonal uh, reading in the way that the hidden or the small diamond, sorry, is, is amenable to. Okay. Now, in addition to these two structures, these two diamonds, we have more in this layout. We have these corner cards here. So what's interesting is that these cards are part of a square and they're also part of the diamond. So I like to read these corner cards, not only as the influences that are affecting the reading or one way um, to read these cards is as affecting the reading or forces acting on the reading, but also as the transition between the inner and the outer. So if you go from the inner intentions to the outer manifestation, these cards can tell you how to go about this transition. So you might like to focus on the corner cards or you can read the whole square. Now, of course, you've noticed that this square here is a nine card portrait. 
so you can read a lot of other lines in it as well mainly the two diagonals here which i take to mean key advice that we can take away from this reading and you can read these lines here and these lines here we read the central one as part of the main vertical and similarly with the two horizontals we read the central one as part of the main um, horizontal so because they're part of a square you can either read them separately or as a sentence now i don't really interpret these middle cards as i would a nine card portrait simply because I feel in that case there's no need to draw these four additional cards here, a portrait would be enough. So I prefer this diamond energy, if you like, that's coming through this configuration and to stick with that. So I like to focus on the diamonds and the diagonals that are coming through here. And then I take the two central diagonals to give us the key advice that we can take away from the reading. So that's a pretty amazing spread and you can do a lot with it. It's a lot of details. Give it a try, use the guide in the description, download it and give it a try. Now, the reason I'm not going to take this layout for our monthly reading is because even though I can insert the three cards from the Astro Clock in the middle, I don't really like the fact that there are two additional cards here. I don't feel it is standalone enough. Uh, I prefer this hourglass approach, if you like, where we had the three central cards. These were the three Astro Clock cards, and then we added around them these cards. So I wanted to find a diamond version that would accommodate these ideas. And that is the middle diamond. So to do the middle diamond, I'm going to take back the cards and I want to show you how I prefer to lay out the diamond. And what's interesting is that the middle diamond is a little bit different from the small and large. The small and large have very similar configurations, uh, but the middle diamond, as you're going to see, is a little bit different. So here we go. Assuming these are the three Astro Clock cards, I would add cards like this. And that is the middle diamond that I have in mind for you for the monthly readings. So we'd have three Astro Clock cards and we add six cards above and below. And what's interesting is that I feel that this shape of the diamond is not really, not really amenable to being laid out like the other diamonds like this. I like it better when I overlap the cards because when I overlap the cards, I feel there's more that um, the, the visual appeal of the cards helps us put together the lines a bit differently. So just putting these, this would be under. So putting these back, I prefer this way of laying out the cards to overlap them. So again, the three Astro Clock cards would be the main line. And then we have this vertical here. We've got two cards. This can be read as the central cross of this diamond. And again, we can read these as a progression, past, present, and future, although I don't typically read the Astro Clock in these ways because when we're doing an Astro, a monthly reading, we are looking for that month, so it's all in, in the future. And then we have this key storyline here, and then on top of that, we have diagonals here, we have the square, we have this diamond here. So there is really plenty to read in this um, version of the diamond and on top of that we have these mini diagonals here uh, that you can read them in pairs or triplets and what's nice is that they sort of all add up to the next level or they go down to the next level so I feel that there is these above and below energies that are bringing their whatever indications is going to be brought by the cards into the central cards of the astro clock so I find that it's a really interesting configuration and I feel that it's a little bit different from the small and the large diamond. Let me know if you agree. So how would I read that? So like we said, these are the key storylines and I would read these cards as the forces acting on the main issue, which is captured by the central card. And then I would also read the top card and the bottom card as our intentions and our foundations, how we're bringing them together. This is the transition from, uh, you know, from manifesting, from building on what we have to manifest, what we desire, from acting on our intentions so that we, they can materialize. These are all interesting ways to read these cards. And on top of that, we can read the square, which connects these forces together. 
Now for the diamond here, I would read this as a key storyline in the context of the medium diamond. And the reason I want to do that is because we have the square that helps tell us about the forces that are acting on it. So this diamond here can give us more indications about what's going on in the month ahead. And that's how I would want to focus on it for the monthly readings. And I have suggestions also for you in the guide. Another thing is the key advice that we can take from these diagonals here. Always good to take away some advice. And then we can also look at these details that come through these small diagonals here and how they build, like we just said. So for the monthly reading, we have plenty that comes through this medium diamond. I'd love your thoughts, so leave me some comments about this. And I foresee that different cards are going to guide the interpretation a little bit differently. Sometimes certain details might come through. Sometimes they're not as important as the other structures, like the square or the diamonds. So really, it's going to depend on the month. And as we move through the monthly readings, we'll discover the ways that we can interpret these cards in this configuration. So this is the middle diamond, folks. I hope you like it. I'm excited to start doing the monthly readings with it. I'd love your thoughts about it and definitely give it a go, give it a try, download the guide and do your diamond. You might want to let me know on social media. I've got the links in the description below. So thanks again, folks, for the encouragement to do something new. I hope you like this diamond and I hope you like the other diamonds as well that you can try in your own practice. I'm working on the monthly readings. It's in the pipeline, so hang tight for this. I'm looking forward to them. And I'm also looking forward to the other readings that I started doing on this channel. So thanks so much again for staying in the loop. Leave me some comments, and I look forward to our next readings together. Thanks so much for watching.